Hey, welcome back to my channel. Okay, we're in a bit of a hurry this morning, but I want to show you guys something quickly before we leave. So, in one of my videos, I was explaining how I put a pole start because I could have started it with wrapping a rope around the primary clutch. This is the primary clutch. So, when you buy a snowmobile, you usually have a little kit. Yeah, there it is. A couple of spark plugs, pull rope, and you got this clip right here. Clip goes on there. You wrap the rope go the directions of a tire going forward right that way and uh, don't wrap the rope around your hand but you just pull it and then this gets going right the problem with doing it like that is that once it's going you need to put this back and with things spinning around like that I mean, come on man it, I mean you know it's a little bit much anyways there's a lot of how-to videos on the net to show you how to do that just uh emergency start snowmobile this is what you get but pretty simple stuff i would have done it i just don't have time to show you guys i'll explain while we're on the road why you got to put this back on and get going you know what so it's like might as well check my oil yeah we're good this is the pole start i was talking about it's a heck of a lot easier to try to wrap a rope around the primary clutch. Expensive convenient, but convenient. Okay, so this is what's going on right now. Um, yeah, I'm doing a lot of road to get to the trail. So what's going on right now. Ah, uh, there we go. Finally, some snow. Ah, oh, that wheel's not coming off. Crap. Come on. There we go. Okay, so, snow, come on, ah, much better, good morning, and it is morning, very early morning, it's not uh, something I'm used to, it's about 8 a.m. right now, I'm usually the kind of guy that doesn't get up till 10, so, but today I made the exception, what's happening is, uh, this has been the craziest winter I've ever seen, El Nino or whatever, yeah, well, had about nine days of snowmobiling. It's just been too warm. The snow, we haven't had any snow. It's, it's just been the most horrible conditions ever. Unfortunately, we are uh, just a little over past mid-February right now and the weather that we are getting is what I normally see in April. So, the forecast shows that today is the last day because it's going into double digits it's high 40s and this is all gone this is all melted and we're getting a bunch of rain they're going to shut down the atv trails as well now the other thing too is this is the first time that the sun <laughs> actually i think i saw it once but every time i've gone out snowmobiling it's been great conditions just makes for lousy video oh this is trail 31 i thought it was trail 35 now i know why i got all confused okay uh we're gonna head into where could i go to this is gonna be the better trail actually yeah yeah this will be the better trail what has been happening it's 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 nuts right now currently speaking it's about minus 15 degrees celsius it's already gone up at least six degrees since i woke up about an hour ago it is going up another 20 degrees celsius it's going to be in uh yeah around plus six plus seven as i said 40s low 40s fahrenheit so wow right now the other thing too is i'm working this afternoon but by the end of the afternoon it's going to be seven eight degrees these trails will all be shut down anyway so this is definitely my last ride kind of sucks barely did 400 400 kilometers this year probably gonna add on another 30 or 40 by the time we're done today or this morning but uh that's a very that's the shortest season i've ever had i'm actually a little bit cold right now yeah my face is cold Whew. that morning crispiness all right 
So right now my plan is to head into the LaRose Forest. Uh, I'd like to fly my drone, but I'm not sure I'm going to waste a whole lot of... Well, we'll see. Because, yeah, time is not on my side right now. I've only got a couple of hours. Then i got to head back home. I've got to get ready for work. i got to make my lunch, shower, all that kind of stuff. So... Having some shadow footage. Shadow footage. So what I do here is I just I got this stuff called alien tape. Really cool stuff. I'll set this up like that. Little platform I built myself. Okay, now I got alien tape here, and then the new alien tape that I just installed, and then, oh, 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 oh yeah, you want these, <laughs> that's my controllers, alright, that is solid, yeah, I think I'm alright. <laughs> You're just asking me, making sure everything's all right. Yes, I'm okay. I'm glad that the people do that, you know, as much as I, you know, I'm just busy doing my thing here, but thank you for asking. Yeah, it's courtesy of people, but yes, yeah, you see somebody on the side, just always stop and just check. They may not have a cell, they may not, you never know, man. All right, let's get uh, Damien Airborne. There you go. Yeah, and you're staying nice and still. Good. Yeah, the other day started her up and the calibration was off and took off right into a tree. Luckily it didn't break. Yeah, so I had to recalibrate it. Looks good now. Okay, let's get you airborne. Let's not hit any trees. I've lost it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's right. Go on. It's not easy to pilot this thing. It's not. There you go. All right, well, good news, found the drone. Hey, I found it, because I did not see it go down. I only had to guess, and I lucked out. It was on the side of the trail, not into the woods. But yeah, that drone's light colored, so I actually went by it. I walked by it once without even noticing it was there, and then when I walked back again, I said, no, it's gotta be around here. And I found it. Yeah, there's a lot of humidity out this morning. My eyes are really tearing up, even though I've got my Oakley glasses on. I'm having a bit of a hard time seeing. There you go. Ooh. I like shadow footage. Let's just don't crash. <laughs> 
shadow footage. No, not what I wanted to do. Let's get out of here. Okay. It broke. You broke it. Oh, you broke it. Oh, crap. You broke it. It's over. Found it, but broke it. situation uh my uh, drone damien over here got really really hurt but damien is one tough customer so the arm broke i gorilla glued the heck out of it i didn't uh i didn't videotape the procedure because i was pretty distraught at the time but i recalibrated it it's pretty solid except for one little thing it looks like it's got a 
a weak elbow shoulder socket I don't know man everything else is so we'll talk more about that in a sec but for now oh <laughs> that helps to give it give it a battery eh? yeah, this way yeah this way okay there we go. now close this still a little bit of snow left but yeah it's almost gone there we're in the we're in the 40s right now where is the remote duh okay so take off with caution no gps okay all right let's see if we can get her to go oh she's stable oh she's really stable oh damien look at you wow okay well i've already called the surgeon because it's not covered under the Canadian health plan. So for uh, Damien over here to get a new arm, it's gonna be about 250 bucks. I already saw the procedure. It's nothing I wanna try. I'm not all that great at soldering stuff, but uh, look at that. She's flyable, man, she's good. So it's only a, a question of where do I wanna fix it? So here's the catch. <laughs> the funny part is, might as well film me, eh? Yes, I'm wearing the helmet so I can talk to you guys. <laughs> so the sensors work as long as you're going forwards with the uh, DJI Mini Pro 3, which is what this is. But if you're going backwards, it has no sensors and it will go into that tree. So it's uh, ironic. Eh? I always buy the thing that the next year after is 10 times better. So the Mini Pro 4 is now out and it's got a bubble of sensors that the mishap that happened with this one would not have happened with a Mini Pro 4. So I don't know, man, do I want a Mini Pro 4? Yes, <laughs> but Damien over here is doing all right, right? So let's bring him back for a landing. But that is one tough piece of equipment. That crash was catastrophic. Pretty wild stuff. So. Well, do I fix it? Do I not fix it? I should fix it. I'm not sure if it drains the battery a little bit more, if it's got to compensate. But no, that arm is definitely loose. Yeah, I should fix it. I don't know. At least I can use it. Okay, it's that time of year to park the sled. It's all over. <laughs> Someone's over there. Okay. <laughs> So, what we're going to do here, first of all, going to let her warm up. I've already let it idle for actually too long. So I know it's warm already. So what you need to do is push this. So first things first, you need to have the tripometer. See how it says trip A, trip B. It hours, it has to be on kilometers. That's my total mileage, 9,000. Okay. And then you're going to... Push this rapidly while holding that. Let it all go and then hold it again for one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. There she goes. She says oil. And then she's going to do her thing. And what she's doing right now is she's flooding the engine with oil from the reservoir. It's going to take a few minutes, a few seconds maybe. That's all there is to it. Once it's drowned, you know she's full of oil and she's ready to be stored. There she goes. She's asleep. She's gone. I also had Stabil in the fuel before I let her idle for about five, six minutes before I did the procedure. So everything, uh, that's it. And don't forget to wash, wash, wash. And just when you think you've washed it, wash it again.